Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing great. So in the last video, we have completed the entire API for our application. So if you haven't watched that, a link in the i button in the description so you guys can follow that. In this video, we're going to write the smart contract for our NFT marketplace API project. So here I've opened the project and we're going to open, you can see here we have worked already in all of this one, controller, model and router. In the last video, close this one and we have also worked on the app.js file. And we have work on the server.js file so we have built in all the connections everything now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our web3 so open this one and we have this pre artifact and cache so when you will get the starter file you will be having this two files so first thing we have to delete this two file so you can delete that one so you can see all of the things we have here we have already installed all of the packages this is the packages and files we have and this is the hardware configuration right now you can see i have done all the configuration and i have also pasted my wallet address my wallet private key make sure to use your own don't simply pause the video and copy and use my private key as your own it's not going to work because after that i'm going to change the private key so you can't able to access this one so make sure to paste your own private key because we need that for deployment of our contract so it looks pretty fine and these are the RPC URL again you have to keep it as it is the way you have got in the startup file don't need to do any changes in here the only thing you have to paste your own private key close this one and let's delete this artifact and we have to simply that's gone and now we have to delete the cache so what I will do is come here and simply delete the cache as well. So no cache, no artifact we have. Open the contract and in that we have created this file NFTs IPFS.source and in that we have to write the smart contract. So let's start working on our contract. So first we have to define the license identifier. Then we have to take the solidity version which is an 8.9. Then we have to define the contract NFTs IPFS. Then we have to define the straight variable so we'll say address payable and contract owner and here i'm going to define the contract owner address so he can take the fund out of the contract so i'll make it payable and this is the address which is my wallet address if you want to transfer any ether you can but do let me know before you transfer <laughs> so we'll come here we'll take this uint variable public listing price because we have to charge money whenever someone lists any nft in our marketplace ether will come here we'll take the struct and in that we have to define all the types data type for the structs so we need the string title we need the description we need the email and we need the category <coughs> unt variable for fundraise means the donation will get on the particular nft then we'll take the address cat creator we'll take the image string and the last one is going to be the timestamp and then we'll have the id of the product and that's the last one so these are the data we are taking in our nft struct looks pretty fine now we have to take the mapping because we have to identify the particular nft and that's going to be happen based on the id so we'll take the mapping unt i nft public nfts so here we have to take this come here we have to take this unt variable public nft count which keep the track of how many nft is getting created initially it will be zero then we'll take the function we're not going to have any constructor in our contract we'll allow user to upload the nft data with the help of function so the works function will create call upload ipfs in that we need couple of data we need the address of the creator then we need the image string then we need the title the description we need the email and we need the category it's going to be a public so anybody can call this function we'll say payable because there is a transfer fund and at the end we want to return the data so we want to return the data call let's say string memory which is going to be the we have tons of information you can string the return the title description emails category all of the data you can return so that's the string then we have to return the another one string because we have three to four extreme variable string memory 
we'll say addressed the owner address then we have to define the url of the image and that's the data we want to display not more than that so it looks pretty good to me now come here what we can do is now we have to simply take the image count and we have to increase that because this will keep the track of the image we have so every time the function will call successfully this number this count variable will increase then we have to take the reference we'll take this nft storage nfts and we'll take this entire nfts and in that we have to pass the nft count and this count becomes the unique id of that particular nft user have listed So come here, we have to take the nft.title and we have to simply update all of the data. NFT creator, NFT description, we'll take the NFT email, this will be the NFT category and we'll have the NFT image and all of the data we are getting from the input field. This will have the NFT timestamp, block time timestamp. Then we have the NFT ID, which is there in the image count. And that count will increase every single time a successful function get called. So they are updating all of the data. And then we have to simply return the data back to the user, couple of data. So we have to return the, let's say we have to return the title and we want to return the description. And we want to return the category let's come here and we have to return the creator which is the address and we have to return the image and these five data we are returning from this particular function at the end after successful upload of the nft so that's the very first function we have in the contract which allow user to upload their nft now we can come here we have to call this function get all nft and this one is pretty simple it will allow us to get all the nft from the contract so we'll be make it public view and we have to run the entire new array of nfts so we'll take this in event variable nft count and pass it to image count then we'll take this another one we'll say current index because we have to run a loop and here we have to check for a condition we'll take this if we'll we'll make a reference memory items new and we have to pass the item count then we have to simply run a for loop unti is equal to zero and then we have to simply run the loop to store the data so we'll say unt 256 current end id i plus one it will increase and then we'll take this nft storage current item and we have to simply update the current id and we'll pass this current index is going to be current item once we have the current item with the current index, we have to simply increase that to one. And after that, we have to simply return the entire items we have stored in the NFTs array. So that's the simple logic. Again, I have followed this particular function many time in other projects. If you haven't built the NFT marketplace project, I would suggest you that after completing things, you have to build that one that will give you a better idea. And I have explained everything in that. So that looks pretty fine. Now come back to the third function. This will call function get image. So this will give a image, image of detail of individual image. We'll stick this string. Then we have to return this memory. Return the string. We have to return all of the data. So that's what we have to pass here. We have to return the ID as well. We have to return the address. We have to return the memory is going to be image this is going to be the fundraise and this will be the other data so all of the data we are returning now we have to simply create the reference we have to pass the id then we have to return the entire data we have taken so we'll say nft.title nft.description then we have the nft.email then we have the nft.category then we have the nft dot fundraised then we have the nft creator then we have the image and after that we have the id timestamp and the id these are the two will have id so all of the data we are returning from this particular function let's come here and now we have to create a function which allow us to update the listing price because sometime we feel that 
we a lot of users are creating um images in our entry marketplace so we want to make money more money so in that context we have to increase the price of the listing so that's the function we have to build so we'll call say update listing price we'll take the listing price and here we have to check for a condition because the one who's calling this function we have to match that he's the owner or not and that's the condition we have to build we'll build contract owner equal to the owner if it's not the owner then we have to throw this error message only contract owner can update listing price looks pretty fine once he passed this particular condition then we have to simply update the price the listing price so that's the function we have now we have to come here and we have to call the function called donate function user can simply call this function to donate fund to our particular nft so we'll say donate to image it will take the id of the image it's going to be a payable because there is a transfer of fund is happening then we'll call this unt we'll have to take the amount and this amount will come in form of message.sender so you have two options you can take it as an input field or you can you can take it as an info field. definitely you're going to take the amount he wants to donate in an input field but there is a two way to transfer into a contract one in the form of actual unt variable or you can take it as a variable message.sender so this one is the most recommended one and that's what i'm going to take it so we have the amount which user wants to donate now we have to simply take the reference of the particular nft which he wants to donate and then we have to simply check for a condition that whether the transaction is completed or not so if boolean is sent to true that means the transaction is completed if it's false then it's failed so if it's true then i have to simply check for a condition if send is true then we have to simply add that particular fund in the fund raised and the amount otherwise we don't want to do anything you can throw an error message but i don't want to do anything let's write a withdraw function and this function can call by the owner of the contract so we'll say address owner external and he can withdraw the fund so we'll say required owner is equal to the contract owner only owner can call can withdraw then we have to take this unt balance we have to find the balance that how much balance we have in the contract and then we have to simply make a transaction so first we have to check where if the balance is greater than zero then we have to make the transaction otherwise we don't no fund available and here we have to simply take the contract owner call this call transfer method and we have to pass the balance so this way the transaction will complete and looks pretty fine and that's the only thing you have to do so these are the entire smart contract we have written i hope you guys have understood the entire smart contract we have written for our marketplace hope you guys have understood that what logic we have built so this is the address of the owner and this is the listing price this is the struct this is the mapping this is the counter variable this is the update and in that we have taken all of this data simply updating the data and returning the data so user can know he has created a couple of nft with the data so this is the get all nft function that's pretty easy then we have the get image we are getting the entire data of a particular image looks pretty fine close this one then we have the listing function which allow us to update the listing pricing and this is the donate function we have which allow us to donate the fund to a particular nft and this is the widow function which can call by honor so hope this entire logic makes sense to all of you guys and you guys have understood that what you have to do and now let's deploy the contract so we have tested the entire api in the last video and now we have to test the and deploy the contract so simply close this one come here simply close this one close this one and here if open up your terminal and now we have to deploy the contract so we're going to use polygon for that so click on this come back to the this is the function we have to call and by the way i have already explained every single thing about the configuration of the metamask if you are new to my channel and if you haven't built any project then you might struggle for connecting the polygon network to the metamask which i have explained in this particular video so make sure to watch this in that i've explained that how you can get the fake a free for set which you can use for deployment of the contract so i'm not going to repeat the same thing here i would recommend you to watch this video and that i've explained everything so so after watching and if you understand that one make sure to do the exact configuration which i've explained in the video and then you are good to go for the deployment but in this video i'm going to deploy straight away so let's run the particular command so we have to run this script first we have to get into the web3 folder 
where we are in the web state folder now we have to deploy we'll call npm run deploy and it's going to deploy the contract time it's generally happened very quickly you can see it's compiling our contract and here you got the artifact and the cache in which you will have the ABI of the contract so if you open that one let me you can see this is the one we have and this is the cache which you don't need to worry about it so once you just a moment it's taking a little bit time it will give you a string or it will open up your default browser so just a moment it's still happening and finally it's completed and it's open the in our default browser so the all thing I am interested in in this URL so make sure to copy the URL and you can also get the URL in your terminal so you can come here right now you cannot see that because it's hidden but you will also get the URL in your terminal so simply grab this entire URL copy this one and simply open up your default browser which you choose to like so I'll go with the Chrome browser and make sure to come and check my channel and if you haven't subscribed do so that will help me a lot so and come here so I in this video I have explained everything that how you have to do the configuration okay in this I have explained everything about that how you can configuration and this is the video which I was talking about in which I've explained that how you can do the configuration of your metamask so you can check that as well so what I will do is come back here and click on this paste the URL we have created and hit enter and this will take you to third web in the deployment sections so first make sure to take on this connect your wallet so I'll connect with metamask let me pass my credential and click on unlock here I am and you can see I have my Matic coin which I which is sufficient for deployment so you can see I have this much Matic coin and I'm using polygon which I have explained in detail in this video or in this video so make sure to watch that so looks fine let's click on this deployment and it's going to make two transaction click on confirm and the second transaction will happen for adding this particular contract to the third wave dashboard so let's make another transaction click on sign in and it's going to happen very quickly so just a moment it's adding to the dashboard I have added the contract here in the dashboard and you can find all the information about it so here we have the build command so these are the commands you have to use if you want to connect in the front end so we have this write function so we have to clear all of this function donate to image up I have update listing pricing upload IPFS withdraw all of this function this is the read function we have and this is the different framework they have defined JavaScript react react native web3 button so all of this method you have to simply connect with the front end and these are the things we exactly things we're going to do to do the configuration looks pretty good to me we have no issues and if you click on the source code section here you will find the ABI and the smart contract of your code so this is the entire ABI and this is the entire smart contract we have written so instead of taking my wallet address you have to put your okay so looks pretty good and we need the address of the contract definitely we'll come back and we're going to take that one as well so it looks pretty good all of the things are looking fine we have no issues in a contract now come back to the over section and this is the Mumbai and here we have the address if you click on that you can able to copy the code which will do definitely so let's close this one and close this one and so, so that's the only thing I want to cover in this video hope you guys have got an idea that what you have to do and how you can write the smart contract so we have done with the entire smart contract we have deployed the smart contract so we have done with the two most important part of our project building an API building a smart contract and deployment everything is done now all we have to do is to bring all this stay all this functionality we have built together in the front end and we can start working on the context in the next video so let's move to that